Well, you know, it really doesn't get any worse than this for photography. Absolutely dreadful conditions. Bright blue sky, not a cloud in the sky, no mist, no atmosphere, none of that, like that, you know, that classic Pacific Northwest kind of vibe that you're looking for. Not today, feels almost like Florida out here. It's just bright and warm and sunny. But even though I'm not able to shoot right now, I remain hopeful. I'm very hopeful for later tonight at sunset, which is the entire reason why I'm here in Bandon, Oregon on the coast. And because of this, because of these amazing sea stacks. I cannot explain, I do not know what it is about me and sea stacks, but ever since a couple of years ago when I photographed some up at Ruby Beach up in Washington State, which is an earlier video here on my channel I'll link to, there's just something about the roughness and the texture of the geology against the smooth texture of the sand and the tide and the two contrasting against one another is just prime opportunity for long exposure, minimalist seascape photography. And it's not something I have a lot of experience doing because I don't live on this side of the country. But this is absolutely the reason why I wanted to come to the coast and photograph it. It's because of all of this. And Bandon, for whatever reason, has a lot of them. Some massive sea stacks out here, like this one here behind me. Photographically speaking, the one thing that's going to be a little troublesome is the fact that the sun, well, the tide is clearly coming in, is the fact that the sun sets over in this direction to the west, directly behind all these sea stacks. So they're going to be backlit when I'm out here later tonight. And then when the sun comes up in the morning, the sun comes up behind this ridge over here, which means that by the time the sun gets above the horizon and over this ridge, it, the light won't be soft anymore. It'll just blast these things with light when it comes up. And if it's, if it's overcast, then that'll be fine. It won't be a big deal. But if it's a clear, sunny day like this, even sunrise is not gonna be good. But I mean, seriously, there are so many sea stacks to be choosing from out here. I believe this one over here behind me, this one is known as the, I think that's the wizard's hat over there. All of these sea stacks have names, actually, that the locals have named them. And from what I understand, there's like some folklore and some stories behind each one. Really, really beautiful. Straight through here. Amazing. But there are these sea stacks all up and down the water here. And in case you don't really know what a sea stack is, a sea stack is effectively where the land used to be. There's land over here behind me used to come all the way out to here and then the water just kind of dug in behind the land and created some channels behind it and then carved out these individual pieces and now hence we have pieces of the mainland here that are out in the water which is how you end up with this <laughs> it's just super cool so right now I'm just gonna keep walking around keep looking for compositions seeing what I can find for shooting later on tonight. Definitely not shooting anything that I'm gonna end up keeping today. But from what I see so far, it looks like there might be some really nice opportunities here later on tonight. Crossing fingers. So as luck would have it, it is the middle of the afternoon right now. It's about 3 p.m. and this thick fog has rolled in from the ocean over here. This came in probably about an hour ago. And it was rather surprising because as you can see up here behind me, there is just nothing but bright blue sky over that hillside. And it's been like that most of the morning. 
But this, on the other hand, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I came to the Oregon coast for. This is what I've been wanting. This is what I've been just, ah, uh, this is it. Like, this is exactly why I wanted to be here. So what I'm doing here is, even though it is the middle of the day and the light's not that great, the light is at least, it is somewhat diffused by all this fog in the air, all of this uh, atmosphere that we have. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating black and white images because one, the light is strong. There is a strong amount of contrast. And two, there's just, there's really no color here. And the way I look at it is when you're trying to decide between, you know, color and black and white. And I think in a moment like this, when you look at it and you try to visualize and think about, you know, what is the story here? Like, what is it that you want the image to convey? What is the character? And when you look at it and think about it, it's really not color. There's no color here. Color isn't really part of the composition. It's, it's not part of the subject. It's not something that I necessarily want to be part of the image. You could actually make a stronger image by going in the other direction and, and emphasizing the, the light values, emphasizing the grayscale. So instead of photographing color, I'm going to emphasize contrast, mist, atmosphere, haze, so I have a 10-stop uh, uh, neutral density filter on here with the uh, Polar Pro Summit system. And I am using the, uh, the circular polarizer in it as well to darken the skies and to bring even more uh, moodiness to the image and just get like a very soft, very atmospheric black and white image of the sea stacks on the coastline of Bandon. So, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping this is going to work. It's looking pretty good on the viewfinder. I'm, you know, I have the picture style on my Canon uh, R5 here set to monochrome uh, to kind of you know, give me a sense of what these images are going to look like when converted to black and white because the camera doesn't actually shoot in black and white when shooting raw. You just get a raw image, but later I will uh, convert these to black and white. So anyway, I'm excited um, because hopefully this means I'll get some good images during the day and maybe more tonight uh, when the sun goes down, assuming we get some good light tonight. So let's get back to it. Last night at sunset, I was out at um, Bandon Beach photographing some sea stacks out there. Absolutely phenomenal, just really, really beautiful. And uh, and I got the sunset that I wanted. I I thought the sunset was just incredible. Unfortunately, the tide was a little high. I wasn't able to get some of the compositions that I wanted uh, that I had scouted earlier in the day. I thought the tide would have receded uh, more by that point, but unfortunately it didn't. So I kind of had to improvise and find some different ones on the fly. And unfortunately, if there's one thing that I, <laughs> one main takeaway from the experience of last night was that, man, I am rusty. I am severely rusty because when I got out there and I started you know, putting in ND filters and I started bracketing my exposure and I started trying to figure out um, you know, what my exposure needed to be, you know, what the optimal exposure should be for the water and all that stuff. So I don't know, I, I'm actually a little anxious to be going back through the memory card and looking at what I captured last night because I 
I just like, I don't know if it's going to be any good. And I think also I felt rushed. I felt uh, like, uh, like I, I wasn't, I think I was feeling a little frustrated and I wasn't quite getting what I wanted. I uh, was in the middle of, a, of doing a, a bracketed exposure and rather long shutter speeds. And the, the, the tide came in and it soaked the sand underneath the tripod and the tripod started going like this into the sand. And I realized that, yeah, this wasn't going to work at all. So I was just constantly moving around and constantly trying to find something that worked. And anyway, it's just a long way of, of, of uh, sharing with you the frustration of not having shot anything in a very, very long time and having to reacquaint myself with how, uh, you know, how these things work, how you do it. And, and uh, well, I guess it's a learning experience, right? I mean, next time I go out, I'm going to be more prepared. I think we're going to go out a little bit earlier this time, too. I think I went out a little too late. But at any rate, it is morning. It is about 55 degrees. It is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> This morning, I am venturing into the Devil's Punch Bowl. This is an area down on the Oregon coast. It's basically a sunken-in cave that uh, is normally the kind of thing that people come and see from above. They park in a parking lot up at the top, and they look down into it uh, and check it out, and I guess keep moving their way down the coast. But there's also a lot of surfers who come here, I would imagine during high tide. But during low tide, low tide is the time to be here because low tide, well, at least for photography, because low tide is when you start to get these wonderful tide pools down here. And low tide is also the time in which you can go inside the cave. You don't want to be in the cave when it's high tide, that's for sure. From what, I've, uh, from what I saw yesterday when I came and checked it out, it gets uh, rather full of water and it's not a place you want to be when the waves come in and the tide comes in and it all fills up. Uh, would definitely be quite dangerous to be inside of. So I think I'm gonna come back here in a little bit and check out some of these tide pools that are down here by the ocean. And uh, some of these are really wonderful and kind of thing you can only see during low tide. But I am mostly interested in the, in the cave itself. So. I'm going to be venturing into the cave, go and check it out. This is without a doubt probably one of the more challenging places I think I've ever attempted to photograph before because it is very, very slick in here. It is very slippery because the tide was just in here just a few hours ago. And so everything is wet. There's seaweed all over everything. There's uh, little bits of green moss as well. And it's just a, kind of a difficult place to be maneuvering around inside of, in addition to all the rocks as well. And you can easily twist an ankle in here and, um, and ended up you know, breaking some pretty expensive gear or maybe even breaking an ankle for that matter. So I ended up just kind of, I just ditched my uh, backpack over there because it was too heavy. And I brought uh, just the tripod and the camera and uh, trying to shoot from back here in the back of this cave and um, seeing if I can get some shots this way. I shot a little bit ago looking through the mouth of the uh, punch bowl on that side over there. See, I'm about to fall over right now. And um, I got some pretty good shots that way. Unfortunately, it's starting to get kind of clear. The sun is starting to come out and um, it's starting to blow out. Everything is starting to get a little too contrasty, but I think I got some images while it was still overcast. Um, I guess we're just gonna have to see 
But in general, this place was actually not on my itinerary when, um, when I came up with a list of places I wanted to photograph on the coast. But I ended up driving by here and I saw the name and I thought, well, that sounds kind of interesting. Kind of reminded me of uh, Thor's Well, which is a little bit more south of here. I'm sure some landscape photographers know what that is. But I thought, okay, Devil's Punch Bowl, that sounds pretty cool. So I'm gonna go check it out. And I am so glad that I did. This place is amazing. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised that this wasn't on my itinerary before and I didn't um, like read about this elsewhere or find out about it. I'm sure, I'm sure it's fairly popular. I'm sure people uh, some other people have photographed this without a doubt. But I feel like I just stumbled across this and it turns out to be really, really beautiful. Of course, you just have to time it just right so that you're here during low tide. But other than that, a uh, really, really fantastic place. Looks like I'm gonna to have to call it a day here at the Devil's Punch Bowl. It was good while it lasted, but unfortunately two things have kind of, well, uh, ruined it. Uh, one, of course, is the sun. It is now bright blue sky, as you can see around me. It is uh, nothing but sun now. I think the sun burned off a lot of the uh, mist and the overcast. Now it is just nothing but sun, bright blue skies. And, um, and it's just, it's a little, and the light is just getting a little too harsh. And the second thing that messes it up is, well, people. When I first got here at about 11 to 30, which was about an hour before uh, low tide, it was like me and I think one other person in here. And then all of a sudden, right at 12.30, I think everyone like checked the tide charts or something and everyone knew that 12.30 was the time. And I guess people like ate lunch or something. I don't know what happened, but all I know is, is that just a mob of people came in and people were getting in my shot. People were just all over the place. And, and not that, I mean, that's, that's how it goes. I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. Of course, we're all here to experience it. And, um, and I don't feel like I own the place or anything like that, but it's just, you know, there's only so much you can do. Anyhow, so it is time for me to head on. It is time for me to go and get some lunch. I am starving. I've been here all morning and um, that's going to do it. So thanks for being here and uh, I appreciate your time and attention as always. If you'd like to see more videos from me, be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if uh, you enjoyed it and if you liked it. If you'd like to see more videos from the Oregon coast, do subscribe because I'm going to be posting more soon. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. See you next time.